So this video is for week one of PRG 211. And as you start to look at the assignment, the individual assignment for, for week one, you'll notice <clears throat> that part of the assignment is to create a pseudocode uh, representation of the program that's explained in the assignment. And so what I want to do really in this video is focus on and give you an example of pseudocode that will be close enough to the assignment that you can that it'll be relevant for you uh, as you do the assignment. So the first thing that I want to um, kind of direct you to is week three and within week three there is an appendix, Appendix C, starting out with Programming Logic and Design. And if you um, click on this and, and open it up, you're going to find that it is a wonderful reference to pseudocode as a language. And so just a couple of things about pseudocode. Pseudocode is a defined language. It's here. Uh, defined uh, in this uh, text and but it's a language that doesn't actually execute so there's not a compiler or an interpreter that will run the program that you create but that doesn't mean that it you don't create a program that actually is runnable and what I mean by that is is that you have to think like a computer when you create your program now Thank goodness we're not having to use, you know, machine language or assembly language or anything like that that is, you know, kind of at the, at the binary level of the way a computer thinks. At least uh, pseudocode is a lot higher uh, of a language than that. Um, but you still have to, you still have to look at it as a computer would look at it not as a set of requirements. And oftentimes when I look at students' pseudocode, especially toward the beginning of this class, what you are really giving me are a set of requirements, not a set of steps that the computer would be able to interpret. So let's, uh, let me illustrate that here, okay? In fact, what I've got here are just really three notepads I use a Mac, so this is with the uh, text edit program. It's just the same as what Notepad would be if you're on a Windows machine. And I've got, I've situated three windows here. This top window is where we're going to put our requirements. This window here is where we're going to put our um, pseudocode. And this window here is where we're going to see our output. Now, obviously, I can't run it, so I'm just going to have to sh kind of show you what the output would be. So let's talk about what the requirements are for our program, okay? What we want to do is we want to ask the user to enter four different numbers from the keyboard. And then once they've, they have entered those numbers, then we want to calculate the sum of those four numbers, and we want to display the result of that sum. Okay, so let me just put this in really simple terms here. Ask the user for four numbers and then add the numbers up and show the total. Okay, so hopefully that's pretty, uh, pretty simple for you. So now let's start thinking about our, our program. And first of all, I would say it's really important that you understand the requirements before you start thinking about the program. Okay, and we're going to talk. We're going to think about a little bit of design as we go into it, and, and some things like that. So I'm going to start by thinking about what kind of variables that I might have in this program. So a variable, or think of a variable as a post office box. So if you ever go to the post office and you see those long banks of these post office boxes 
that people uh, pay money to have their, their, their mail delivered there. And you'll notice that for each of those, there's a couple things about those that are important. The first one is, is that there are different sizes of post office boxes. There are little teeny ones that barely an envelope fits in, and there are these big ones that businesses use that you could put a giant box in. And there's kind of everything in between. The second thing that you'll notice is that there is on the front of that box, there's either a name or there's a number or there's something that designates that box. And then of course the third thing is that if you get your key and you open it up, you'll find that there's a place to store that the, the to store your mail in there. Okay? And so variables are much like a post office box. They have a size, they have a name, and they have something that you're going to put within it, which we're going to call a value, all right? And so I need to think about what do I need to store that I'm going to be able to have to use later. And in pseudocode, I first need to declare or set up a post office box, set up a variable. And when I set it up, I'm specifying the size and I'm giving it a name. Okay, there's nothing in it yet. And I do that like this. So for this particular program, we know that we're going to need some numbers. And in uh, pseudocode, I can choose really from a couple different ones, an integer or a real number. An integer is a number that doesn't have a decimal point and something that goes beyond the decimal point. A real number has a decimal point and could potentially have, uh, you know, cents in, the, in it. So uh, I'm going to declare this as an integer because we're just going to keep it simple here. And I'm going to call this one number one. And I'm going to call this one number two. And I'm going to call this one number three. And so forth. Now, number one, two, three, and four, those are the name. If you think about you know, the, the name that's maybe on the front of that post office box, okay? It's the way that I'm going to reference it. When I come into the post office and want to get my mail, you know, how do I know where it's at? Well, I know that I'm, my, uh, my number is one, two, three. Or maybe it's Troy. It's, it's got in a little post office within a little town. Maybe it just has people's names on it. And so I know how to get there. The one other one that we're going to need is we're going to call it total because we're going to create the calculate the total. Okay. All right. So within pseudocode, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we want to ask the user for four numbers. Okay, that's great. But I, I think I need to um, to ask him a little. I need to present something for the user. So we're going to display. That's going to show up on the screen, and we're going to say, "What is the value?" value for number one. Okay, so that'll show on the screen. And then I'm going to use an input. And I'm going to put number one in here. So basically what in this input line does is it gives you a spot on the screen where you would type the number. And then when you uh, hit enter, it's going to capture it and it's going to put it in that in that mailbox, that post office box, for number one. Okay, it's going to take care of that for me. So I'm going to basically, I'm just going to copy these. Maybe this will be easier. Okay, so we're basically going to do this four times for two, for three. Oh, I copied too many, didn't I? Didn't I? Uh, three. Can't type. And for four. And I'll get rid of that one. Okay. So it's going to. Uh, the other thing to remember about a computer program is that it is going to execute sequentially. So from the top to the bottom. And so I have to line up the stuff in the order I want it to execute. So we're declaring these things at the top. So we've got our our mailbox is set up and then we're asking the user 
for each of the four numbers that we want to collect. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to calculate the total. And we do this by using any time we're going to change or set the value within our mailbox, we use the keyword set. So set total is equal to, well, it's equal to number one plus number two plus number three plus number four. Okay, it's just going to add them up. And then the last thing we want to do in our program is display the total is, and then this is the syntax for, for doing this within pseudocode. We put a comma after that closed bra uh, closed double quote, and we put total in here. Okay, so that is our program. So let's think about what the what the output is going to be. Okay, we have to make it up on our own, but we know that the first thing that we're going to see is we're going to see this question. What is the value for number one? And then I'm going to type, let's say, um, let's say ten. And then I know I'm going to see it again for number two, and I'm going to type twenty. And then I'm going to see it again for number three, and I'm going to type thirty. And I'm going to see it again for number four, and I'm going to type forty. And then it's going to do a little calculating, and then it's going to say the total is, and it's going to display the sum, which is 10, right? Um, uh, 3, 6, yeah, as 100. Because 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40 is 100. And that's the output that your program is going to display. So just to recap a little bit. Um, first of all, uh, we talked a little bit about the reference that's in week three. Spend some time in there. Understand that a little bit. That's going to help you a ton. Number two, understand what the requirements are. If you have to restate them from the assignment and put them in your own words, that's great. That may be very helpful for you. In fact, I like to do that myself. Number three, think about a program whether it's in pseudocode or in some other language, that understand that the computer is going to interpret that sequentially from top to bottom, one step at a time. To write a program, even if using pseudocode, you have to understand or think a little bit like the way the computer might, and then apply that using the language of pseudocode. And it's going to be different than your requirements. It's going to meet the requirements, but it's going to be at a much more detailed level, one step at a time. So we talked about variables and the fact that they're like a mailbox at a post office and they have a size or, or a type. Uh, in this case, we're using an integer. They have a name, like either it's a number on the front or it's a name on the front. And they have a value. They have something inside of them or they're empty. I mean, empty is a value as well. It's called null. And then we define those or declare those at the beginning. And then we're going through the steps here. We're using display to display to the screen. We're using input to collect input from the keyboard. We use the set uh, value to set the, va the value of a mailbox. Now, you'll notice that input kind of combines getting the value from the screen and setting the value in the mailbox. It does both. In this case, we're not getting anything from the screen. We're just calculating the sum here and we're setting the value of total. And then we're using another display to display the, the end result. So I hope that this will help you to understand and really get a better idea of what it is that I'm expecting from your pseudocode in this class.